Hey guys, it's B. I look a bit rough, I'm very tired, but it's Be Real, so it's kind of in keeping with the theme. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Be Real, where we just catch up all the little bits and pieces from a week and talk to you about it. I didn't do one last weekend. It was going to be like a every Friday kind of thing, um, but I just didn't really have much to say and I didn't have the time it would have been rushed and I would have just been trying to fill up 10 minutes or something. So I just decided to leave it that last week. But this week I've planned a little bit and made some notes and I have enough to talk about that I think you might find interesting. Um, we're going to have uh, Andrew's tag about our YouTubers narcissists as our talking point. But that'll be at the end of the video. I've got some Charlotte Tilbury products, a couple of which are really disappointing. One is quite good. Some fails because I've been, you know, when I tidy up and I'm going to throw stuff out or donate it or whatever, I think, oh, I might bring that to your attention. Um, we have two questions that, that people left on the last video um, that I thought were good questions. Uh, and what else? What's been going on with my week? So let's dive into it. OK, so first of all, the two questions. The first one was from Hello, Kathy. And she asked if I could only focus on one area of my face to do makeup. Maybe I was in a rush or I would only ha could have those products that day. It's easy, this question for me. It would be my eyes. Now, I know a lot of people would do complexion. They cannot go out without foundation. They don't feel comfortable just showing their bare skin. My skin, you know, is far from perfect. I have quite a lot of hyperpigmentation. I have dryness. I have uneven skin tone. And as I get older, I definitely need things to brighten and even out and stuff like that. But actually, if I'm on the school run and I have not got up early enough or I'm in a rush to get out the door, the two things that I really can't leave is my lashes and brows. I was from Hello Kathy. So thank you for your question. Emu asks, and she's great. She, this person, um, she comments on every single video she watches every single video and she's supported my channel for years so thank you i do see you um could i compare the wallet on chain so and she asked me to compare but she didn't really stress what aspects so i don't want this to take too long so i'm just going to do a couple of what i use them for and differences and stuff this is a caviar classic flap in the medium large this is a lambskin classic wallet on a chain you can see there's a huge difference in size this is a 10 inch across bag this is like a I think it's like a six and a half or something like that. Completely different. This is a large wallet with a chain. This is a bag. And this is not even a very big bag. So this is tiny. It's sort of the same size-ish as the rectangular mini. And then when you do that, obviously, it's a lot thinner. Um, so the differences are that this is a full structured handbag. It has a double flap. It has classic features like the burgundy, it's got a pillow in it, the burgundy interior and the lipstick pocket and all that jazz. Um, this is a wallet. It's very, like, it can go really flat. I've actually got a wok saver in the bottom to give it some structure and to stop shape loss. And it also means that you can put your things in nice and evenly. The new woks have been improved. They have a much nicer metal zip, not a YKK zip and it has a nice magnetic closure um you have lots of slots and compartments oh there's a lovely dior diorific lipstick in there loads of cards lots of stuff i'm not gonna do a full-on review of the what right now we all know why i love it it does scratch more easily this one's lamb but you can get it in caviar i've got a scratch on the inside here but it doesn't bother me um what do i use this for if you are good at paring down, you can use this as a day bag. If you are just doing quick errands and you need like your car key, your door key, um, a face mask, a credit card and your phone, that kind of thing, you are fine. You're good to go. And some people are ingenious at packing, but I do see people trying to fit little purses and all sort of key holders and nonsense in here the wok comes into its own if you use the functionality of the wok in my opinion i really can't understand people with um slgs trying to pack this out you'll just stretch it and ruin it you don't need to they've given you zillions of little slots just use this and put your individual things in and yes it takes a bit of time to maybe take your key out of your key holder and whatever but if you're using it as a day bag it'll take you five minutes to do that and then you can enjoy it all day the other thing that I like, and I think this is a benefit, a plus over the minis and over the classic flaps, the cost is a lot lower. It's still a lot for what it is. 
it's an, it's a bit more of an entry level price point for Chanel. I'm not saying in general, but the other great thing is that you can actually completely conceal the chains within and you have a clutch or you can wrap the chain around and make it like a shoulder bag. It's just extremely versatile. It's small. It feels great in the hand. You can fit more than I described. If you, you know, I had this lipstick in here. I had my phone, I had a flat card case. I had masks. I had a tiny little hand sanitizer spray thing, uh, a little perfume sample and a comb, you know, and a, and a mirror to do my lipstick. And that wasn't bulging at all on Monday this night. Is, uh, nearly three times the price. It is a full on classic. Um, the chain is a lot shorter. So even on slim girls who aren't very tall, this is a bit of a challenge cross body but if you like it like how we people wear the bum bag sitting up high just under on the ribs if you like that you can do that um i just wear it on one long thing like this and i don't really i i do find i get that with bags so for me this is less practical but it is really special as like a chanel fan i always wanted to have the classic flap in this size even though i knew it wouldn't be like a daily bag i would never like swap it with my you know give up my jumbo for this because that bag, the chain strap is the perfect length for me. Um, I can fit more, obviously, than I can fit in the wok, but you you still, it's very structured. You still can't fit loads. Um, but the, the proportions and the way it looks is absolutely stunning. This is the most attractive size, I think, in any of the flat bags. But again, it's just the length of the chain. So when it's doubled, I use it as a handbag or on the crook of my wrist. I don't really find myself doing this because I feel like my arm squashes the bag down and covers up most of the bag if you're petite that might not be an issue so that's the um, medium large classic flap i use this mostly as a dinner bag like a going out or special occasion bag like weddings or whatever and i'm happy to have it for that but i know a lot of people need expensive bags to be more widely like useful in their collection but i'm happy to have one classic that i just really look after and don't wear too much and as I said, the wok has gold hardware, which I am, as I get older, I'm much more pro gold hardware. I like to have a mix, but I'm much more into gold hardware than I used to be. And I just love that this can be like a little clutch, crossbody, shoulder, everything. So and that helps you. I do find they have very different uses. Okay, Charlotte Tilbury products, the Pretty Blushed Beauty, which is the lighter of the two new ones. Um... And I really like it. I like the colours. It's great for on the go, uh, like school run, because you've just got everything in there. What she's done that's great, there used to be a great big highlighter here. And now that is a face powder. The highlighter and the blush are small and there's the bronzer. This is a good buy from Charlotte Tilbury. These, not so much. Right, where's my other one? It might be downstairs. No. Um... Right, I'm gonna, I've got, oh, those are quite new as well. I'll share those with you. Right. I am obsessed with Charlotte's Magic Lip Oil Crystal Elixir. This is just the plain one. It's a lip conditioner. It is just so delicious. It's got like a sweet, slightly lemony maybe. And it feels nice. It makes your mouth shiny. I need to put something on there actually. It's a rollable. It's also a thin product, meaning you don't get a thick, gloopy layer. You just get just enough off this rollable. It just brings your lips to life and it's like lemon cake batter, but not strong lemon. It, it's just sweet and delicious. And she brought out, she expanded it and brought out two tinted ones. These aren't cheap, by the way. These are £28. I was really surprised. Um, you get the same amount in here, eight mils, but this one hasn't got the flavour. And you might not mind. Also, it's different. It was very thick and gloopy. I'll try to use it up, but it's unscented and it's possibly got like a slightly unpleasant. You know how unscented products sometimes have a kind of a chemical weird. They almost, you almost need a bit of fragrance in some products to mask that or just to it enhances your enjoyment of the product. This just doesn't taste very nice. The colour's OK. It's like a very sheer it's not coming out now, rosy tint, but it just doesn't have that lovely smell. So if I'd known that, I just wouldn't have bothered. I would have just bought another one of these. Um, and it's kind of a bit patchy. It's okay. It's not amazing. Um, I wish I had a wipe now. These, um, the Tinted Love, just a really poorly executed 
product uh, there's not many people you're going to find saying that um, i've got bohemian kiss because it was like a red but a brownie terracotta which is quite nice on me and quite summery so what this is is a lip and cheek tint which looks really nice there the problem is a lot of these it doesn't blend very well really patchy and really horrible you could put it on the lips but it again it has no hydration it just dries so it's like a stain and it again it looks patchy and it it sort of fades but you're left with the marks of where it first contacted you so you'll see look i'm i've blended this all out but it's just left a perfect stain where i swiped it on and that underneath didn't budge so it's just a really weird product you have to really if you want to do it on the lips you've got to build it up and build it up for it to show and this is one of the stronger colors on the cheeks again it just it doesn't blend i know that like even the classic red one from benefit you haven't got very long to blend that but if you put it on your fingertips and then you just kind of do that you can blend it properly if you act quickly with this you you just cannot apply it straight to the skin and then blend it even if you literally blend it straight away so this is a dud for me and i just think she releases too many things what is nice is um they've come out with a little mini handbag set of the classic pillow talk so it's a smaller liner and mine was kind of running out a bit anyway and then a mini lipstick and I'm a sucker for mini things because I like to really downsize in my bag so often I'll apply the full size one at home and then I'll take this little one out with me and if you haven't tried the pillow talk and you don't want to spend as much money and you don't know if it'll work out for you you can buy this cute little mini duo I think it's like 15 or 20 pounds and if you really enjoy it, then you could maybe buy the full size product. So they still make nice releases, but just be careful with the zillions of new limited, whoops, limited editions, because sometimes the formula doesn't really represent, you know, when she first came out, she was a, a high end, a super kind of high end luxury niche makeup brand. And they are overdoing the releases and I think it's suffering for it. Costume jewellery fail. So... I love the tribal earrings. I like the old school tribal earrings and they don't have very many options anymore that are just the bigger ball at the front, uh, sorry, at the back and the big and the smaller one at the front. They now have charms and things hanging off, which is pretty, but I liked the simple, I'm very simple with jewellery. So these, I had two pairs. I have the pearl ones and then I have these and these were my favourite. These are rose gold with like a gunmetal dark silver in the front okay i've had them for nearly four years but i've kept them in this thing the lady that sold them to me said just rub them over with a clean like soft cloth when you've worn them for a while they've completely discolored to the point of just can't wear them one is pink still but patchy and the other one is sort of going two-tone it's got silver in places, it's gone back to gold in other places. It looks very different from this one. You're not going to really see in the video. You can see they're two different tones. The silver bit is okay. It's more the bigger one in the back, but to the point where I don't want to wear them. I did reach out to Dior and give them the feedback and they were very kind, but they said, we, we don't um, expect costume jewellery, fashion jewellery to last long term. And after a year, we can't really help you. And actually, that's reasonable. I have had an issue where I had another pair years ago, a pink pearl pair. And within about three months, there was some very odd bubbling, like as if there was air or water under the surface of the pearl. And they were really apologetic and sent me a new pair. And they didn't even want the old pair back. I just threw them away. Um, so they are, it's not, I'm not, this is not me bashing Dior. It's just that they didn't last. And Although they're costume jewellery, I didn't wear them that much. And I clean them in between and it's just, yeah, that one's nearly completely all gunmetal now. And that one's like yellow gold. They, they were really expensive. I would buy them again because I love them that much. But they don't do these now. They just do the white pearl. I will say the white pearl pair that I've got, they do darken. And my real pearls from Tiffany have darkened, but they still look nice. They're not white anymore. They're slightly of a deeper creamy tone. But um, the the woo, the Dior pearl version of these, they've gone quite yellowy and it's just not that attractive to me. So, um, yeah, a bit of a fail, guys. This is the rub. These were over 300 quid and or about 300 quid and they don't last. So if you buy costume jewellery, I guess um, just wear it a lot when it's new and really get your money's worth um, because it's just not 
worth it. Uh, I think that's kind of it. And I'm Hi, so I've I've changed and I've gone for a long dog walk and come back and stuff and I forgot to include the bit about um, Andrew's tag. The reason I'm putting this on the end of Be Real is because I filmed this tag and I felt like in 15 minutes I didn't really say anything. I waffled and I just decided to just succinctly give my opinion on it in, in just a few minutes because there are loads of people who did Andrew's tag and the responses were really good and I felt like I didn't really have anything particularly fresh or different to say but she did tag me and it's a really interesting topic so I wanted to acknowledge it. So basically when she is asking are YouTubers narcissists I think the discussion in general the response has been is it like self-absorbed? Is it coming from ego or attention seeking? Do we need as a group of people, are we on here because we need external validation from others? What are the kind of positive and negative reasons maybe why people find themselves sharing online? And then people have related it to their own journey, their own story of how they ended up making videos. You also have to bear in mind there are some people making videos for commercial reasons. They want to turn Maybe they did it as a hobby and they wanted to grow it to the point where they could turn it into a job. Maybe they already had a brand or a job or something that they did and, the, and YouTube enhanced that business. Um, and then there are people like me who have tiny channels and tiny audiences, but we do it to join in and feel part of the community. So narcissist is a really strong word and it's something that is really bandied around now in popular culture. And I think it, in general, people use it as a negative description of a self-absorbed like person and that that implies or maybe the premise of the tag implies that are we super self-absorbed people and that's why we're here no so my basic answer to the tag is no i don't think um youtubers are in general narcissists god this is like a really weird angle there are people in society that are narcissistic um, and by that, generally, I think we mean people with an inflated sense of self, with a huge ego, I'll just put my notes down because I don't need them, um, with a huge ego who um, don't really consider others and they're very me, me, me. And obviously, if you take it to the extreme, it's a personality disorder where people are, they don't, they act kind of without any remorse and can do, be mean and nasty to people to, to their own ends because they're just so self-absorbed that they don't really see beyond themselves and that is a problem for the people in their lives but for me it's all more a positive thing you know I just came to YouTube there's no clever answer I felt that I didn't really have anyone to talk to about girly superficial stuff like none of my friends were massively into makeup or skincare or handbags and I just thought oh there's this whole world out there of people that I can connect with. Some of them live all over the world. It's interesting. Um, I didn't really have a voice and I'm not saying my vo I'm using my voice on YouTube for anything particularly profound, but it does, it does evolve and change over time. Like in the beginning, I used to be so excited to share with my online friends that I'd got something new and I just thought, oh, they'd like to see. And I like to see when they get things. It evolved a bit now to the point where, and I don't know if that's just over the course of life or maturing or whatever, like I don't feel as comfortable just showing stuff. Like I feel like I kind of want to share unbiased, genuine reviews of various sorts of products to try and be helpful and share what I've learned. I'm not an expert, but I have particular interests and I'm pretty good at really researching and looking into things before I buy them or like, and then I like to share with other people so that like my friends in my real life are like bb i need a new night cream and i'm the one that they ask and i'm like well this is really good and this is a bit expensive and it's a bit fragranced but it does really make you glow you know i enjoy that sharing of the things that i know about because it gives me a chance to feel some like i've you know not self-esteem because we shouldn't get our self-esteem from outside things maybe but it just makes me feel like a value so my channel gradually at the moment, it, I'm experimenting with changing to have a bit more variety of content. I still like my high end things, but I don't plan to buy as many. I've been buying like more affordable things and 
trying to make it a more inclusive and a more of an accurate representation of my real life and interests which is a bit more broad than just like handbags and stuff and we'll see where it goes when i enjoy it i do it when i don't enjoy it i don't do it and if it's stressful and i haven't got a lot of time and it's rushed i feel like it shows and i don't want to do it and i try to take the pressure off myself and think I don't need to do it if I don't want to do it but people some people it's a small group of people but the people that are like loyally foiled me foiled have loyally fo oh my god I can't talk followed me for a long time like they enjoy it when I make videos it's, it's like 20 minutes of escape escapism so I enjoy it do I think I'm a narcissist I hope not I don't think I have a massively positive or grandiose idea of myself I think I think quite a lot of negative things about myself which wouldn't really fit with narcissism does it take a bit of ego and confidence to assume that you've got something to say that people need to hear maybe but I don't think that's necessarily a negative thing are there narcissists on YouTube some of them there are definitely some very high profile people on this platform who display in my opinion my humble opinion very narcissistic tendencies which really turn me off and I just don't watch them anymore I think people forget and or people lose touch with real life if they are living in a bubble of there are lots of people who do really well commercially on YouTube they get lots of money they're working with lots of brands and I don't know if what much of they've got to say is very genuine or very warm anymore and that kind of has a vibe of narcissism about it and I think that people who have got good bullshit detectors can like this is always falling over can sense that and I it leaves me cold um but you know I've got limited leisure time everyone's got limited leisure time just watch the things that you find positive and put you in a good mood and if if they don't then don't I do see one of the flavors or aspects or dimensions of narcissism is when people get very victim mentality and find a, a, have a really hard time with criticism. So there's a lot of talk about trolling and nobody wants to see people being abused when they put themselves out there. It's happened to me, it's happened to everyone who ever put anything on social media. I, <clears throat> um, but I think if you are reacting very hostilely to any kind of even constructive criticism, that's an issue where you maybe have that inflated sense of self and you you assume that any criticism is an attack on you, then maybe you haven't really got your feet on the ground. And I think it's really good to take feedback on board. If lots of people are saying the same thing, then you might want to reflect on that. And I've seen a couple of examples of YouTubers um, reacting way overboard to very mild comments that aren't even critical actually but that just aren't just 100% flattery um people asking about the price of things people asking can you advise me where I can get this or you know like I don't know and just such a reaction I find that quite a narcissistic sort of response but on the whole I think most people have um, a niche an area of interest or something where they've got skills something unique that they want to share and they get something out of sharing that and the people that watch get something out of watching that and that is a positive loop and you get to chat to people from all over the world that you wouldn't have contact with in lockdown it was one of the ways where I felt connected with people um I've actually over the years made real friends that I've actually physically met um so it's it's really positive YouTube and it isn't narcissistic. It doesn't come from like self-absorbed people. But like any part of society, you will find some people there who have those tendencies. So that's all I wanted to say.